Hello! Today we will be solving this problem called Array Division. So we are given an array containing n positive integers and our task is to divide the array into k subarrays so that the maximum sum in a subarray is as small as possible. So in other words, we're trying to minimize the largest sum in any of the k subarrays. So in the input, in the first line, we will be given two integers n and k. n can be as large as 2 times 10 to the fifth, and k can be as large as n. Then follow n integers between 1 and a billion. In this first example, we have uh, an array of length 5, and we can afford to make three subarrays. So the answer here is 8. And we can obtain that optimal answer by dividing the array in this way, like dividing it here and here. Then we'll have three blocks. The sum of the first one is 6, the sum of the second one is 7, and the sum of the third one is 8. So the maximum sum here is 8. And that's the answer because we cannot uh, partition the array and obtain a maximum value that is smaller than 8. So let's uh, go to the drawing board. This is our example. And right off the bat, uh, let's, let's mention something. Like it is clear that the answer cannot be smaller than the largest value in the array. Like here, we know that the answer has to be greater than or equal to seven because 7 has to be in some subarray and since all values are positive then the sum of any subarray would be at least 7 we could achieve 7 for example if k was equal to 4 instead then we could partition the array like this then the sum here would be 6, 7, 3 and 5 and the maximum is 7 so we know the answer will be always greater than max of array Cool. So now let's see. So can we, in this case, we said that the minimum possible is seven. Can we achieve seven? And the answer is no, because if we want to achieve seven, we have to leave it by itself like this. Then this block needs to be split up because if we leave it as it is, the sum here would be eight and it will be greater than seven. So we need to split this block, but if we split it, we already have four blocks. So then we then this contradicts the fact that we can only afford three blocks. So that's why seven is not possible. And for eight, we saw that it was possible. And we could achieve that by leaving the array like this. We have three blocks and the sum of the largest one is uh, is less than or equal to 8 and can we achieve a block of 9 I mean can we split the array such that the largest block is greater is less than or equal to 9 and the answer is yes because in this configuration it is still valid that no block is larger than 9 so 9 is still valid and this will also go on for all values okay so let's see this other example here we have five elements and uh, let's try to do the same thing can we achieve a block of seven and as we saw if we want to achieve a block of seven we have to split it right here and these two blocks will be larger than seven so seven is not achievable in this case can we achieve a block of eight and the answer is again no, because if you want a block of eight, we would have to split one or we would have to split this block further. And we cannot do that because we can only afford three blocks. So eight is not possible. How about nine? Nine. So if you want to achieve a block of nine, again, this the sum of this block is 11 and we cannot merge 7 with any value because then we will have a block of either 11 or 13 so we have to split this block again but we can't so 9 isn't possible as well 
and what about 10? 10 is also not possible for the same reasons and now 11 can we achieve a partition where the largest block is less than or equal to 11 and the answer is yes we can split the array right here the sum of this block is 2 the sum of this block is 11 and the sum of this block is 11 so 11 is valid we can split the array in that way and the same will go on for all other values we could split the array such that the largest block is less than or equal to 12 and so on so does this remind you of something we have a property that is valid for a continuous block and isn't valid for a, a block here and there is this magical value where the switch happens and that value where the switch happens is the answer we are looking for so as we saw in a previous video this is our predicate meaning something that is true for some values and isn't for others and it is continuous like this we have a block of no 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 then followed by a block of yes 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 and this reeks of binary search so we will use binary search in this problem so we could just like the brute force approach would be just to try each value and see if it's possible and let's see how we would do that first how 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 would we know that for example that 10 is not possible we would know that by doing the following we will start from here and start adding up the sum here is 2 and 2 is less than uh, 10 so that's fine then we add 4 so 6 still fine then we when we want to add 7 we see that the sum would become 13 and that's larger than 10 so we cannot have these two values in the same block that's why we have to split right here then we move on we start a new block so we start our sum again our sum now is 0 we add 7 to it so our sum is 7 and then we try to add 6 to it but if we add 6 to it our sum will become 13 and we can't have that because the largest sum we can have is 10 so we have to split again and then we move on to 6 6 is fine so we add it to our sum our sum now is 6 and we try to add 5 to it but if we add 5 to it then our sum will become 11 but we can't have that so we have to split again so whenever we try to add the next value but we can't we just create a new block or we close the actual block and start a new one and at the end we count the number of blocks we have so we have four blocks here but we can only afford three so this means that we cannot have 10 as our answer so that's why we assign a no to 10 and this greedy approach of creating blocks is actually optimal because these values have to go to a certain block so like these values have to be in the first block so the only question is whether or not we would add this value to it or not so that way this is a way of checking if a certain value is valid or not so and this can be done in all of n and in our problem we would need to check for all values here like from the max of the array till the sum or at least till like a very large value that can be as large as um, the sum of half of the array if the number of blocks is here is two and since the sum can be as large as 10 to the ninth then this is not practical because the total complexity would be something like n times sum of values sum of array and this is very large but as we saw instead of going through all the values we could use binary search here so we know our sample 
space of all possibilities we know the low which will be the max of the array and we'll just say that 10 to the 18th is the max or the high and even if this sample space is so large it's from 7 to 10 to the 18th using binary search we'll go to all these values in log of 10 to the 18th which is 18 times log of 10 which is 18 times 3 which is like 54 it is mind-boggling that binary search can go through all these values in 54 iterations and at each value like we'll start from here we'll calculate our middle being low plus high divided by 2 and we will check whether or not it is valid using this technique if it is valid then we will uh, update our answer we will initialize our answer with some large values say 10 to the 18th and the answer is just the the, the sum of the maximum block here and if mm, mid is valid meaning that we can partition our array such that the sum of the largest block is less than or equal to mid then we will update answer with mid and the next time we'll try to have a, a smaller value for mid so we will need to reduce mid that's why we will update high to mid minus one otherwise if mid is some value here like if it's not valid we will need to move in this direction and that means and in that case we will update low to be mid plus one pretty much like the straightforward implementation of binary search and the only difference is in the check function so in so to sum up we will start with low being equal to max of array and high being equal to 10 to the 18th and answer being equal to 10 to the 18th as well and we'll have the classical implementation of binary search while low less than or equal to high and then we will calculate uh, mid being equal to low plus high divided by 2 and then we will just need to check if valid if valid mid if this is valid meaning that we can partition our array such that the sum of the largest block is less than or equal to mid then we will update our answer so answer is min because we try we are trying to minimize the sum of the largest block so this would be the min of answer and the mid and next time we'll try to get a smaller value for mid that's why we reduce our right bound so if high was here at this this time and let's say this was our low and this is our mid so next time we would bring high right here so this would become high so that's why we put high equals mid minus one otherwise if that's not the case if that value is not valid then else uh, low would be equal to mid plus one meaning we will instead if that wasn't the case then the answer does not exist in this interval if it's like at this position if we tried 9 and didn't get an answer if 9 was the first value we tried and couldn't get an answer we are sure that the answer can't be 7 or 8 so we just disregard this whole va this whole interval and start looking at this value again and if for example we saw that 11 is valid so we're looking for the smallest value so there is no point in looking in this interval so that's why we bring uh, our high here so that's the power of binary search each time we throw away half of the sample space so that's pretty much it now let's let's check out the code So this is our code, we'll start by reading n and k. Then we will declare a vector of ints that will store our values. 
then we will initialize our max value because uh, we need that value to be uh, our low in binary search because no other value smaller than max value can be the answer so we go through a for loop and uh, at each position we scan the value and we update our max value then we declare two variables low and high and we initialize low with max value and high with uh, 10 to the 18th and we will declare our answer maximum sum and initialize it with 10 to the 18th and that's the value we'll try to minimize after each iteration then we'll go through our while loop so while low is less than or equal to high we'll calculate our mid and then will declare uh, this is uh, this is the variable that will count the number of blocks so we initialize it with one because we will have at least one block and we will increment it each time we go beyond the maximum allowed sum which is mid in this case and then we'll declare a variable sum and then we'll look through all values so each time if as we said if at some position like if I am at this position here the sum here is 6 so if adding this 7 will bring me beyond my allowed uh, max sum which would be like say 10 then I need to stop and create this block and start a new block here so that's what we did here so if sum plus the value the current value will be greater than mid this means that i need to start a new block so i need to increment the number of blocks and initial and reset the sum to zero then i will just add the actual value to sum and when i'm done with this this is where when where i check what happened so if the number of blocks is strictly greater than k this means that this mid is not valid and in this case i will just update law to mid plus one otherwise if it is valid then i will update my answer maximum sum so if mid is less than maximum sum remember i'm looking to minimize maximum sum so mid in this case is valid and i just check if it is better than the answer i had so far so i'll update my answer with mid and in all cases i would update high with mid minus one and at the very end i'll just print my answer so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you for watching See you in the next video. Bye bye.